Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwebrin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the Elixir ROM based on Android 13 onto Redmi Note 10 Pro and Note 10 Pro Max. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, you have to download the Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. And as you could see, these are the files of the platform tools. So once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu. From there, you have to go to about phone, then go to additional detailed info and specs and tap on MIUI version seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So go back, again go back. Now go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Check mark, I am aware of all the risk. And now you will have to wait for 10 seconds. Once that time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK. And with this debugging is enabled, you might get an RSA key prompt. So tap on OK. So let's now verify the debugging connection. For that, you have to go to the platform to folder. So go there, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform to folder as you could see. So type in ADB devices and hit enter. And you, sh you should now see a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide and the video and then unlock the bootloader using the official me unlock tool. Once that is done, you will now have to Download the firmware for your phone. So for Note 10 Pro is the suite and 10 Pro and Pro Max is the suite in. So you could get it from this. I have linked the guide. This is a third party site. If you want, you may also download from the official me source, but I usually use this site. It's the Xiaomi firmware updater. So for instance, you have, you could check if you are on the latest firmware or not. So for that, you have to go to the settings menu. From there, you have to go to about phone and make sure that there are no pending updates. So as of now, I am on the latest build and there are no updates. So still, let me show you my MIUI version is 14.0.1.0 and the version code is TKFINXM. So make sure to download the firmware which correspond to your region as well. So for instance, in my case, it's the IN Indian region. So in the for the India region, there is no latest firm, firm the latest firmware is as you could see 14.0.1.0 which I already have on my phone. However, however, if that is not the case with your phone, then please make sure to download the firmware from here or from here. I've given the link in my guide. So download the latest firmware onto your phone and then we will move ahead and flash it onto your phone as well. I'll also show the flashing steps. Even though I'm on the latest firmware, I will once again flash the firmware just to show you the steps of flashing. So download the latest firmware from here. So just to tell you in the code of any firmware, the first alphabet is for the Android version, T is Android 13, then KF is the device code and after that is the region. So IN stands for India. Similarly, over here as you could see, T is the Android 13, then KF is the device code and MI stands for the global region, whereas EU is for the European region. So download the firmware corresponding to your region and then transfer the firmware file onto your phone. So download the firmware and transfer it onto your phone. So in my case, I have already done that. Let me verify the same ones. So as you could see, this is the firmware file. So with this, we have got the firmware. Let's now move ahead with the next step. So next step, you now have to download the ROM file for your phone. So this is for the 10 Pro and this is for the 10 Pro Max. So get it from here and likewise, transfer the ROM file onto your phone as well. So as of now, both the ROM as well as the firmware should be onto your phone. Once you have checkmarked this requirement, let's now move ahead. So now you will have to boot your phone to fastboot mode. So open the CMD window inside platform tools 
and type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone should now boot into fast boot mode in a matter of few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and then we will proceed ahead so as you could see we are now in the fast boot mode so let's now verify the fast boot connection for that type in fast boot devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fast boot drivers i have made a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to my guide and install the drivers once that is done use the windows x shortcut keys and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone has been shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fast boot signifies that the pc is able to read the phone in fast boot mode and you could now proceed ahead so now you will have to boot your phone to orange fox recovery so first off we will boot our phone to recovery and if everything is working well and good we will then flash it it's always recommended to first temporarily boot and then permanently flash so let's do that as far as the elixir rom is concerned you will have to download the r1114 version of the recovery i have linked in this guide as well so let's now refer to my guide for flashing the orange fox recovery so from here we have check mark this requirement as well so as you could see i have explained all the recovery and rom which are required so for project elixir rom you need the r 11.1.4 so go to this link and download the orange fox recovery 11.1.4 this is the zip file so get it from here and once you have got the recovery you will have to transfer the recovery zip file to the platform choose folder on your pc so let me copy the recovery file from here and transfer it to the platform tools so since we are not flashing it directly we will first boot it to verify if the recovery is, is working or not so for booting we need the img file so what you have to do is simply extract the recovery zip file so select extract all and choose here and with this we have extracted the recovery it will take only a few seconds so let's just wait and the extraction is now complete let me try it once again so with this we have extracted the recovery so in the recovery you will get a an recovery img file so copy the recovery img file and paste it inside the platform code folder on your pc so let's paste it here so what we have done we have simply downloaded the orange fox recovery zip file then extracted the img file and the img file has been now placed here we uh, we need the img file just to verify if the recovery is working or not you could also directly flash the recovery but it's not recommended you should always first boot your phone to recovery and if it's working well, well and good you could then permanently flash it so let's now boot our phone to the orange fox recovery so type in fast boot boot and the name of the recovery which we have just got it's recovery.img so recovery dot img and hit enter and our phone should now boot to the orange fox recovery if our phone boots it then it signifies that the recovery is working well and good and we could then permanently flash it so let's just verify the same it could take up to around 5 to 10 seconds so as you could see our phone has booted to orange fox so this means that the recovery was correct and we could now proceed ahead and flash this recovery permanently now for flashing this recovery you could directly flash it from the phone itself what you have to do is simply transfer the recovery img file onto your phone so copy the recovery img file from here and paste it onto your phone so just paste it here and it will take only a few seconds apart from that you could also boot your phone to the fast boot mode and then flash it there are there are many methods of flashing the recovery i'm choosing the easiest one so transfer the recovery img file onto your phone and now you just have to install it if it's not visible here then just do a refresh once and it should not be, be visible so now now as you could see the recovery img file is here so select the recovery img file choose the recovery partition and swipe to flash it and with this we have flashed the recovery.img so now tap on reboot recovery so our phone should now reboot to the orange fox recovery and if that happens then this signifies that the flashing is now successfully completed and we have permanently flashed the orange fox onto your phone so what just to repeat in short what we have just what we did was to extract the img from the zip file then we booted our phone using the img file and after booting via img file 
we flash the recovery file onto our phone. An easier approach would have been to simply use the fastboot flash recovery recovery dot zip. Since our phone has a recovery partition, you could directly flash it, but it's not recommended because if something is wrong with the recovery file, then the recovery partition might get corrupted. So don't use this command, always use the boot command and then you could flash it to the recovery partition and then simply transfer the recovery IMG file onto your phone and then flash the recovery IMG file to the recovery partition. So with that said, we now have the Orange Fox recovery permanently installed onto our phone and we could now proceed ahead to the next step. So finally, we could now flash the firmware and the ROM file. So first and foremost, you have to flash the firmware. So from the Orange Fox recovery, select the firmware file and perform a right to flash it. The flashing will now begin and it could take up to around 5 to 6 minutes for the flashing to complete. So let's just wait for the time frame. So guys, the flashing of the firmware is now complete. Now before moving ahead, you will have to re reboot your phone to recovery. So go back, then go to the menu, select reboot and select recovery. So it's always recommended that after flashing the firmware and before flashing the ROM, you will have to reboot your phone to the recovery mode. So we have just flashed the firmware and now we have booted our phone to the Orange Fox recovery and now we could move ahead and flash the ROM file. So let's now proceed ahead and flash the ROM file. So just select the ROM file and proceed ahead and perform a right swipe to flash it. The flashing will now begin and it could take up to around 5 minutes. If you don't do a reboot to recovery after flashing the firmware and be before flashing the ROM, then you might get an error code 1. So if you ever get an error code 1, whether it's the pitch black recovery or the orange fox or TWRP RP recovery, what you have to do is simply reboot to recovery and then retry flashing the ROM. In that case, the error code 1 will be fixed. So always keep in mind that after you have flashed the firmware, do a reboot to recovery and only then flash the ROM. So with that said, the flashing has now started and it could take up to 5 minutes. So let's just wait for the time frame. So guys, the flashing of the ROM is now complete. Once that is done, you will now have to do a format data. Do note that this will wipe off all the data from your phone. So if that's well and good, go to the erase section, then go to format data and type in yes and hit the orange check mark. It will now do a format data and will take only a few seconds. Once that is done, you could now reboot your phone to the system. So just tap on reboot system and your phone should now boot to the OS. So let's just wait for the time frame and do keep in mind that the first boot up after flashing the ROM will take up some additional minutes to boot up. That's completely normal from the subsequent boot up. Your phone will not take that much longer to boot up. So as you could see, it's the boot animation of the Elixir ROM. So this signifies that the flashing is now complete and your phone should now boot into the ROM in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame. And only it's the first time de delay that's happening. From the next time onwards, your phone will boot up as a normal boot up speed. So let's just wait for a few seconds. So guys, our phone has booted to the OS. The entire boot up took around 30 to 40 seconds, which is completely normal for the first time usage. So let's now get started with the setup process. I will be skipping the initial setup screen for the and show you the OS and UI and UX of the ROM. So let me quickly accept the terms and condition and skip all the stuff. So let's just wait for a few seconds. And as you could see, we are now in the Elixir ROM and this is the latest one based on Android 13. Let's go to the settings menu and as you could see, it's completely revamped and it has a completely different UI as compared to other ROMs which are AOSP based on and this is the section known as Essence which is the USP of this ROM and it beholds all the tweaks and customization that you might not find anywhere else. For example, these are the customization with regards to theming engine. You could use the custom theme or the vivid Monet theme, the black theme as well and this is the headline body font. Quite a lot of font styles are present there which you could choose from here. Let's change the font style and then this is, these are the icon packs which you could change. 
and apart from that you also get the, the icon shape and the signal size so these are the icon shape for example this is the paper rectangle and as you could see the icons have been changed next up we have the signal style and the wi-fi icon style and then let's go back and check out something else so these are the lock screen tweaks double tap to sleep so let me check okay tap on the status bar and it will go to sleep so it's also working well and good edge lightning as so if i get a notification the edges will light up on every notification then you get the media art cover and the lock screen animation the crt is the one which you find in the older xperia phones and it's not present here as well apart from that there are a few other tweaks and let's check out these are the status bar tweaks and then we have the qs toggles and qs layouts as well from here you could choose the default or let's change it and check out this is the cyberpunk style while it's not looking good but i am just showing it for the sake of the friends apart from that we have a quite a few qs customizations as well then brightness slider positioning and there are, are a few gestures swipe to take a screenshot so swipe using three fingers and the screenshot will be taken now going back you have a system navigation style double tap so on aod mode you could double tap to check the pulse notification as well and press and hold the camera button for power menu as well touch screen gestures haptic feedback so there are quite a lot of customization and here you, you can find some of the other miscellaneous tweaks for me this is the most important advanced restart you could directly reboot to the recovery bootloader or okay so it has only two options in other rom you could also access the fast boot d mode but for us i guess the fast boot and the recovery mode should suffice and the system ui is also important so rather than do doing a restart you could simply do a system ui restart and it will rectify all the ui ux issues and there are a few gaming mode options as well so guys in short this rom beholds quite a, a lot of customization but even then it's quite stable in nature and it's based on the aosp pixel based rom with a few customization goodies and on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of these steps do let me know in the comment section and guys thanks a lot for watching